Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be finding extrema on a closed interval. So I guess the first thing you need to know is what does the word extrema mean? Um, extrema means y values. So we're going to be finding the absolute highest, biggest y value and the absolute lowest, smallest y value on a closed interval, a beginning x and an ending x. So here's our guideline in finding extrema. And we've got several examples that'll put these guidelines into place. All right, so some things you might want to add to your notes right now is right here where it says guidelines for finding extrema. Okay, it very well could have been told to you to find the absolute extrema. So sometimes you'll see them, you know, write down find absolute extrema. Sometimes they'll just leave off the word ab uh, absolute. So if the word absolute's not there, then it just implies that you're finding absolute extrema. As opposed to, in the future, finding relative extrema, where relative extrema are just mins and maxes in a neighborhood. Again, absolute extrema is the highest y value and the lowest y value on a continuous function, that's important, okay, on a closed interval, a beginning x and an ending x. So it's like you're looking at a piece of a graph and saying, okay, hey, looking at this piece of this graph, what's the highest y value and what's the lowest? y value. So absolute extrema, and I put in here in parentheses y values. When we're asked to find extrema, we're asked to find the y values, and we're oftentimes interested in the x values at which those high y's and low y's occur. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is find critical numbers. Right, well, you probably don't know what that is, so let me define what a critical number is. So I'm going to come over here. I want to do the same thing on your notes. A critical number is an x value where the derivative equals zero or where the derivative does not exist. So it's an x value on the function f where the slope equals zero or the slope does not exist. Right, in order for a slope not to exist on a continuous function, you're probably looking at something like a vertical tangent, a sharp turn, maybe a cusp. We've talked about that. So the definition of a critical number is an x value on f, maybe I should put on f, the function, where the slope is zero does not exist. So that's the first thing we're going to do is find critical numbers, and we'll take you through the process of how to do that. Step two, we're going to evaluate the function at each critical number in AB. I haven't really talked about the parentheses and the notation here, but I'll get to that. But step two basically boils down to once you get these x values from step one, you plug them back into the original to find out what those output or y values are. Step three, we're going to evaluate the function at each endpoint of the closed interval AB. So these brackets mean we want to include a, b, the endpoints. Okay. Here, we're not looking at including a, b, the endpoints okay, of the interval of x's. So just so you know, a and b represent a beginning x and an ending x okay, on the piece of the graph that you're interested in finding absolute extrema. All right, step four, just analyze the information you have. The smallest of all the output values from step two and three is the minimum, and the greatest output from steps two and three would be the maximum. So let's see what that looks like in an example. All right, so find the extrema. Notice they didn't use the word absolute, but we knew that that meant the same thing. First thing you want to do is look at the equation given. Okay, is it continuous? Yes, this function is continuous because it's polynomial. And all polynomial functions are well behaved, continuous, no sharp turns, etc. All right, so it's continuous and we have a closed interval. So you can consider this your a value, your beginning x, and your ending value. Ooh, b. It's not good. a and b. All right, the first thing I'm going to suggest to you guys on every problem that you guys do is type in the function into a calculator. Let x min be the a value and x max be the b value. Set a good y window. Get a visual of what this graph looks like on this select interval of x's. Your visual will help determine your math here. 
So I'm going to come over here. Uh, and as best I can, on the closed interval from negative 1 to 2, show you what I found in my calculator. Okay. So this graph actually starts about right here. And what it does is it comes down and it gets real flat. So the slope here at x equals 0 is 0. It doesn't turn around and go back up. Okay? It just actually continues to decrease. And you can kind of see the graph falls underneath the x-axis. Okay? So, and then I have a minimum. And then what happens is the graph kind of quickly leaves the screen like this. So that's a rough sketch of the original function f. So when I look at this, okay, I can definitely see that on this closed interval, my absolute maximum is going to be this y-coordinate. And the way to get that y-coordinate is to plug 2 back into the original equation. 2 happens to be an endpoint, so I'm evaluating the function at an endpoint, which is really step 3. So this is going to be the absolute highest y value, and it occurs at an endpoint of x equals 2. Now the minimum, the absolute minimum value, is going to be this y value down here. And it occurs at some particular x. So I'm going to need to find this low y and this high y, and then I will complete the objective of the question. All right, so for these types of problems, um, let's start with step one, find the critical numbers. So that means I've, I've got to at least find the derivative. Okay. 12x cubed minus 12x squared. All right, so to find the critical numbers, I have to find out where this derivative is equal to zero or does not exist. And I think the best way to go forward in answering question one of the guidelines is to do um, kind of a, a two-column situation where we consider each of these two cases. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to consider, okay, are there any critical numbers where the derivative would equal zero? Oh, sorry, that should be an x. As a matter of fact, let me pause that and erase it, honestly. I'm just going to put f prime equals zero. All right, better. So where is f prime equal to zero? So I'm going to take the derivative, set it equal to zero, analyze what needs to be done. All right, from our algebraic background, I know I'm going to take out a common factor of 12x squared. Okay, when factored correctly, I think it should result in this. You can always check your work by multiplying back in what you factored out to see if it results in getting you back to what you had previous. Yes, it does. Set each of these two factors equal to zero. So either x equals zero, that results from 12x squared equals zero, or x is going to equal one. Okay, and then just some notation down here I want you to be familiar with. Okay, so again, we have two critical numbers where the slope is zero on this graph. Okay, and if we think about connecting back to the graph, x equals zero, yes, I see the slope is zero. And then x equals one, which appears to be right here, yes, I see I have a horizontal tangent. Okay, so this, the mathematics makes sense with the graph. But what I wanted to share with you guys was some alternate notation that results from you finding this. So we need to be fluent with our notation as well. So f prime evaluated at 0 okay, would be 0. Also, f prime evaluated at 1, if I plugged 1 back up here to the derivative, would give me 0. So if this notation just appeared out of the blue and you looked at it, we need to be able to interpret what it means. What's the meaning of this notation? Well, it means that on the f graph, the slope at x equals 1 is 0. On the f graph, the slope at x equals 1 is 0. So, so far, both of these are critical numbers, x equals 0 and x equals 1, because these are x values on the graph of the function, but they're also contained within the interval of x's that we're considering. All right. Okay, we're still working with step 1. 
So let's find the x values where on f where the slope does not exist. So we're going to do our second column. So where is f prime d and e? Okay, we'll take the derivative and set it equal to a d and e situation. Well, if the slope does not exist, that means you're dividing by zero with who cares whatever's on top. Okay, if I'm going to solve this, I might create a fraction here. I'm going to cross multiply and I'm going to get one equals zero. Well, that's a false statement. That's incorrect. One doesn't equal zero, so what that tells us is there are no x values where the slope would be d and e. There are no x values where I'm going to have a vertical tangent, a sharp turn, or if we've discussed it, a cusp. So this equation only has two critical numbers. x equals zero, x equals one. At x equals zero, I don't have an extrema. I don't have a min or a max. That's what an extrema means also min or max, I just have a flat spot. Okay, I have a horizontal tangent of zero, but it's a flat spot. At x equals one, I do have a minimum because the visual. Okay, step two. Okay, what we're going to do with the rest of this is we're going to create a t-chart. This is x, and this is f of x. So we found the critical numbers. Now let's find the y values at the endpoints and the critical numbers. So I go back to my interval. It starts at negative 1, it goes to 2, but numerically I'm going to fit in here, not every integer, but just the critical numbers that I found for my previous work. So 0 and 1, so I guess negative 1 to 0 to 1, the end point of the graph is at 2. It just Don't look at this as going, hey, I have to put down every integer from the beginning A value to the ending B value. It just so happened that 0 and 1 were the two integers that happen to fall uh, between my two x's of my closed interval. All right, and then over here, what's the function evaluated at negative one? What's the original equation evaluated at zero? So what we're doing is we're plugging in each of these endpoints and critical numbers into the original equation, not the derivative, the original equation. All right, and to save time in our work, once you do that, I would confirm if I'm you, I would confirm. When I plug in negative 1, I get 7. Plug in 0, I get 0. Output is negative 1, and the output is 16. So if you have the visual to refer to, negative 1, 7 is here. 0, 0. 1, negative 1. And 2, 16. So using our previous work, our organized t-chart, we can now jump off of that and respond to the question of finding the extrema. So I have an absolute, I'm looking for the smallest y value and the largest y value. I'm looking for step four. I have an absolute min of y equals negative one and it occurs at x equals one. I have an absolute max of y equals 16, and that occurs actually at an endpoint where the x coordinate is 2. All right, it wouldn't be wrong to put these in ordered pair form, but you're not really sharing with somebody that you know that extrema is a word that's connected to the y coordinate and not the x coordinate. So it's kind of revealing when you write it this way that you know extrema means y coordinate. If you just wrote it in ordered pair form, you know, we're not real clear if you know that extrema means the y coordinate since you gave us both. All right, so the lowest y value is negative 1. It occurs at a minimum at an interior point. The absolute highest y value occurs at an end point, uh, and it's 16. All right, let's take a look at example 2. All right, for this next example right here, we're asked to find the extrema on the interval, closed interval, 0 to 4. So we know the domain of this function is all real numbers. Again, it's a polynomial function. It's well behaved. It's continuous. It's differentiable. But we only want the selection of this graph that occurs from 0 to 4. And when I graphed it, here's our visual. So if I'm just trying to pick out the absolute min, I'm going to say it occurs here at an interior point. 
of the closed interval at a minimum and the absolute maximum occurs at the end point, the right end point. Let's see if our math, our work supports it. Alright, so the first thing we have to do is find the derivative. Step one, find the critical numbers. That's either where f prime equals zero or does not exist. I'll take care of that in a minute. Set the derivative equal to zero. You're welcome to factor this, but I'm going to extract the roots, so I'm going to add the 12, divide by 3, and I'm going to end up with positive and negative 2. Okay, are both of these critical numbers, these x values, critical numbers? So I need to wrap it up here a little bit. Okay, well, do 2 and negative 2 both belong to the domain? Are they actually x values of points on the graph of the function? Yes. But look at your visual. The only one I'm concerned about is the positive 2 because my closed interval goes from 0 to 4. So negative 2, although x equals negative 2 would be a critical number, it's not part of my closed interval. So I'm only going to consider the positive 2 when I build my t-chart in a minute. But, okay, um, sorry, let me state over here that both of these are critical numbers. And the alternate notation that would support that would be the derivative or f's slope at 2 would be 0 and f's slope at negative 2 would also equal 0. But then again, I'm not interested in what's happening at the x-coordinate of negative 2. Okay, um, let me come over here. Hopefully I'm not going to run any kind of room. Uh, let's find where the derivative does not exist. So where does 3x squared minus 12 equals a does not exist situation? Right, again, you can create a fraction, cross multiply, 1 equals 0, not true. The derivative exists everywhere. This is a nice function. Its domain is all real numbers. The derivative exists everywhere, so there's no critical numbers okay, where the slope does not exist, meaning there's no vertical tangents. You got, the, you got the idea. Okay, so now let's create a t-chart. My inputs are x, my outputs are f of x. Okay, my endpoints are 0 and 4, so I'm going to start with 0, and I'm going to include any critical numbers up until 4. Well, the critical numbers here that I'm going to include are just going to be, well, it's just going to be 2, because negative 2 doesn't fit between 0 and 4. Let's evaluate the function at each of these x's. So go back to the original equation and plug in these values. When I plug in 0, I get 0. When I plug in 2, I get negative 16. And when I plug in 4, I get positive 16. So if we're looking at the graph here, we see this is 0, 0. Oh, that didn't make sense. <laughs> uh, this is 0, 0. This is 2, negative 16, and this is 4, positive 16. So analyzing these values here, we can see that the smallest value is negative 16, and the biggest is 16, hence our absolute extrema. So let's respond. The absolute minimum is a y value occurring at x equals 2. And the biggest number here is 16, and it occurs at x equals 4. All right, and in the next video, we're going to look at a couple more examples um, where the problems get a little bit more interesting. See you in a second.